In this video, I'll go over how to take your research topic and break it down into keywords, which you can use to easily and efficiently find related sources to cite in your papers. Also, please be aware, the examples used in this series of videos are geared towards biology students, but the skills and concepts I'll go over are broadly applicable across disciplines. The first step to breaking down your topic should be fairly obvious. You have to know what your topic is. Try to distill it into no more than two short sentences or blurbs. For example, let's say I'm conducting research to measure the plasma electrolyte levels in adult American bullfrogs infected by the chytrid fungus B. dendrobotitis. If I tried typing that entire thing into Google or into one of the library's databases, I might find one or two articles I can use to write my paper, but I'm going to have a hard time finding enough articles to cite, and I'm going to have an even harder time finding peer-reviewed articles. Instead, I need to distill this topic into something shorter and broader. Something like, plasma electrolyte levels in frogs infected by chytrid. Still long, still kind of complex, but easier to work with. Once you've distilled your topic, you're going to want to break it down into main concepts. Think about the big ideas, the main points you're going to be looking at. For my example, I would probably start with plasma electrolytes, frogs, and chytrid. Your topic may have more than three main ideas, and that's absolutely fine. Just be aware that if you end up with more than a few, you're either being too pedantic and specific with your concepts and can likely combine some of the similar ones with each other, or you're trying to tackle too much in one paper. Unless you're writing a dissertation, you probably won't be focusing on more than four or five main concepts. After we've broken down our blurb, we need to take a closer look at our main concepts and generate some keywords for each. The best way to start is by listing related terms, variations, and synonyms for each of our ideas so we can try to account for all the different ways researchers talk about the same or similar things. Generating keywords is often deceptively difficult to do. You may need to use Google, or better yet, a scientific encyclopedia, to look up your main concepts, especially the ones you're not extremely familiar with. For example, you might remember that frogs are amphibians and are closely related to salamanders, and that's a good start. But unless you're a herpetologist, you're probably not going to know off the top of your head all the different names and creatures that are associated with American bullfrogs. Reference books and other sources can help you find out things like scientific names and other useful taxonomy, and they can help you identify terms that, while possibly not entirely synonymous, are related enough to your main idea that you can still find useful information to cite in your paper. Don't worry if you can't come up with a huge list of terms. Your list is not exhaustive, nor is it set in stone. As you start finding and reading through sources, you might identify some new terms you can add, or you might realize that one or more of your terms aren't as useful as you originally thought, at which point you can remove them from your list. Now that you've started your keyword list, you should be ready to learn about some advanced search techniques you can use in many of the databases the library is subscribed to.